Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do part three of how to choose a bushcraft slash survival knife. And I had debated on breaking this up into two separate episodes, but I've decided I'm going to do it in one. Just because doing it in two would open up a never-ending rabbit hole of debate. And ultimately, it all comes down to personal preference. But instead of just rambling on about these two topics, we're going to hit a quick overview, just basic information, and then let you make your decision from there. Today, we're going to talk about blade grind and blade steel. There is more types of blade steel out there than you can count when you take into consideration all of the carbon steels, all of the stainless steels. We could spend all day just talking about the different steels. When it comes to steel, you want a steel that's tough and reliable. Something that's not going to break at the least little bit of pressure put on it. You also have to take into consideration your environment. If you're going to be working around an environment that is very wet, then you may want to lead toward a stainless steel versus a carbon steel. Most of us understand why that would be, but carbon steels don't like moisture, excessive amounts of it especially. There is a lot of maintenance required with keeping a carbon steel knife rust free. But either one that you decide to go with, be it stainless or carbon, there's so many different kinds. Like I said, we could spend all day talking about the different types of steels. That will come down to personal preference. One thing though that you need to keep in mind with your steel selection other than your environment is how easy is it going to be sharp be to sharpen in the field. Some of the 1095s down on that end of the carbon steel range, if you dull your knife, you can find you a good piece of sandstone or limestone and roughly sharpen it in the field and get it back usable. You get into some of the crucible steels and stuff. Those are a whole lot harder, a whole lot higher rock well, and you may not be able to get them back usable in the field with just a rock. So those are things to consider. Yes, those crucible steels may hold an edge longer, but when they finally do get dull, can you use a field expedient method to sharpen it back into a usable edge? These are all things to consider. The biggest consideration to me over blade steel would be blade grind. Most bushcraft and survival knives you find are one of four different grinds. They're either Scandi ground, convex ground, saber ground, or full flat. Each of these has areas where it will shine. Can they do all tasks? Yes, but some will do some tasks better than the others, if that makes sense. For instance, a full flat grind will do food prep better than say a Scandi grind, or a convex, or even a saber. But then when you come to batoning wood, the flat grind may not do as well as say a saber grind. I've had all four of those. And me, myself, I prefer the saber grind, grind over the others just because it 
fits what I do with a knife better. Scandi are great when to when it comes down to working wood, carving, that kind of stuff. The thing I found with the Scandi knife that I had is when it come to batoning, it didn't baton as well as a saber, and it didn't do food prep as well as a food flat, a full flat. Convex, I've only got one knife that's convex, and for my use and my take on it, it does fairly well at everything, but there's a lot of room for improvement on it. Um, the convex to me doesn't do batoning as well as a full saber. Uh, it doesn't do as well in carving task as a Scandi. And it's a little worse in food prep than a full flat. I've got examples of all of them here. Let me get them out here and I'll show you. Now some of these will be... extreme examples the only one I don't have down here is I don't have the convex knife that I have down here it must be upstairs in the drawer we'll go with these and this will give you a basic of what I'm talking about here in front of you I have the three I have a full flat let me get this raised up a little bit so I can get you up here where you can see everything. There we go. All right, on the bottom, I have a full flat. If you look, that blade is flat all the way to the edge, then it's got a secondary bevel. This one is a Scandi. The blade's the full thickness, then right at the very end you have a taper. And this one is a Scandi. This one is a Saber. You have a flat at the top, then you have a grind down toward the edge, then you've got your secondary edge. The difference in these is how it carries the steel, I guess you would say. The saber carries the thickness of the spine through more of the blade than, say, the full flat or the scandi. And me, myself, I like that because that decreases the chances of that saber ground blade failing under stress. Not saying that it won't, just saying that that decreases the chance because of it. Scandies, you will not find a real thick spine on a Scandi ground knife. The thickest I think I've seen on a Scandi was I had a Topps Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft, and it was three sixteenths of an inch thick, but it had a differentiated heat treat on it so the back was softer than the actual cutting edge full flats I've seen them up to three sixteenths of an inch you get into big choppers and you may see them in a quarter inch but then when you start getting that thick on a full flat you'll have a keen edge but you lose a lot of strength they're very flexible that's why when you get to the longer blades like in machetes and stuff you can see them bow and they're made to do that to decrease the chances of them breaking but these are just examples uh, the only knife I have that is convex is my knife I have from Jeff White and I did a separate video on that. I don't have it down here with me, it's upstairs. But 
these are all things to consider. Now, in a perfect world, you would have a chance to experiment with all the different grinds and different blade steels. But we don't live in a perfect world. Talk to people. Ask questions. Just like I said with comfort. Handle a knife that belongs to a buddy just to see if you like it. Take it. Carve a little bit with it. Whittle a little bit with it. See what you think about it. Because ultimately in all of this, it boils down to what you like and what feels good in your hand. And the whole purpose of this series is to throw out things to consider, throw out things to think about, things to look at when you're choosing a knife. What I like in a knife, you may not like. Ten people all lined up in a row will have a different idea about what they think the perfect knife is. They will give you ten different opinions on one single knife on what they think about it. So try to spend as much hands-on time as you can. Price is completely up to you. But do your research. YouTube is a wonderful thing because just about any knife out there on the market, somebody's made a YouTube video on it about what they think about it. Listen to that input. Think about it, and then if you get a chance to actually use one of them, see what you think yourself. But there's nothing worse than dropping $200, $300 on a knife just to get it home and use it for a week and decide you don't like it. Been there, done that, guilty, as charged. I've wasted a lot of money on knives in my life and I hope to God this video series helps others not make some of the same mistakes that I have. I have bought a lot of knives just on the cool factor because they looked cool and been highly disappointed with them. So, that's as far into this as I'm going to go on blade steels and blade grinds. I hope this has helped you all. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll get another one up for you soon.